One of the very first brushes most students will have with algebra is through solving what are called one-step equations, like this. They are equations so simple that to solve for the unknown, we need only perform a single step. In this case, subtracting 3 from both sides to isolate x and finding that it's equal to 2. After struggling through that, students will encounter the slightly more difficult two-step equations, which look like this. These are equations so complicated that in order to solve them for the unknown, you actually need to perform two steps. In the end though, once you get it down, it's not all that much different from the one-step equations. In this example, we do the subtract just like we did before, but to finish things off, we just have to do a bit of division to get rid of that multiplication by 2. Of course, probably for most of us, these problems are trivial and are hardly worth discussing. However, I can't help but be amused by cute methods for basic math, like using a checkerboard for multiplication, or the snappy short division method, or today, the onion method for solving linear equations. Solving equations like like this is pretty straightforward and doesn't leave a ton of room for creative expression. So what you might consider a different method of solving these linear equations really just comes down to a different way of organizing the steps. I read about this onion method on Passy's World of Mathematics. I'll leave a link to the website in the description. This is a method that's a bit visual and it really emphasizes the aspect of solving equations that were kind of unwinding stuff that's been done to x. We're unwinding these layers to end up with just x at the core and figure out what it's equal to. It's as if we're peeling away layers of an onion. So this is the beginner's onion method. It's called the double onion. You can read through the steps here, but let me show you how it works and you can tell me in the comments what you think. Let's say we're solving this dastardly single step equation, a plus eight equals 10. Of course, to figure out what the heck a is here, we're gonna have to bust out our onions. For the double onion method, we begin by drawing an onion that represents the side of the equation with the variable. At the very core of the onion, we put just a little circle, Inside, you want to put the variable. So in this case, that would be a. Then in the next layer of the onion, we write the first thing which is done to a. In this case, that's the addition of eight. So we would write plus eight. In the next layer of the onion, you write the result. If eight is added to a, the result is a plus eight. In this case, that's as far as we have to go, and we can now use the second onion, which we're going to peel away to find the value of A at the center. For the second onion, you start with the outer layer, and you want it to be about as big as the first onion. The outermost layer of the first onion should represent one side of the equation. In this case, that's A plus eight. And so the outer layer of the second onion represents the other side of the equation, in this case, 10. Then we just move inwards. In the next layer of the first onion, Onion is plus 8. So in the next layer of our second onion, we want to have the opposite of that. So minus 8. And then in the next layer, you want to put the result. It's just like the original onion, but in reverse. The result of 10 minus 8 is 2. And thus, we have our answer. A is equal to 2. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> well, Let's try it with a uh, two-step equation. Let's see how the onions handle that. So this is a lot harder. This requires two steps instead of one step. This is two X minus three equals five. We're gonna bust out our onions to solve this bad boy. The methodology is the same as what we just did. It's just going to go on a little bit longer. Inside the core of the first onion, we put the variable. In this case, that's X, or, or I should call it the unknown. Then in the next layer, we put the first thing that's done to x. In this case, the first thing that's done to x is multiplication by 2. And you see, since I write my letter x's so elegantly, I'm at liberty to use the cross symbol for multiplication. So we multiply by 2. Then in the next layer, you put the result. The result of multiplying x by 2 is, of course, 2x. Then we put the next operation performed, which is a subtraction of 3. So in this next layer, we put minus three, and then of course one more layer in which to put the result. 
the result is 2x minus 3. All right, with that snappy first step out of the way, now we draw a second onion. Again, you want to make it about the same size as the first one. The outermost layer of the first onion represents the left side of the equation, and so the outermost layer of this second onion represents the right side. That's 5. And then we just work our way inwards, doing the opposite of what we see in the left onion. Here we have minus 3, so here we're going to have plus 3. And then in the next layer, we put the result. 5 plus 3 is 8. Then we move into the next layer and do the opposite. Multiplication by 2. What's the opposite of that? Well, that would be division by 2. And then inside, you put the result. 8 divided by 2 is 4. There's our answer. X is equal to 4. So how about that, huh? Are you sold yet? Well, here's the thing. Once you've trained sufficiently long with the monks atop Math Mountain, you actually don't need two onions. The monks on Math Mountain do all of this with a single onion. Thus, let's go over the single onion method. The monks atop Math Mountain actually developed this single onion method just due to the difficulty in harvesting crops at such high altitudes. But let's try this single onion method on that same equation we just solved. All we have to do is take our equation and draw onion layers from the inside out. At the core is the unknown x. The next layer is the first thing that's done to x, which is that multiplication by 2. The next thing that's done is that subtraction of 3. And then the outermost layer captures that other side of the equation where it's equal to 5. This is our single onion, and we just have to peel it going inwards in order to solve for the unknown. We start off with that outer layer, which is 5. The next layer is the subtraction of 3, so we're going to do the opposite, which is the addition of 3. The next layer is this multiplication by 2, so we have to do the opposite, which is a division by 2. And then at the core is that unknown x, and so we have that this is equal to x. Now there's one big fat problem here, which is the order of operations. If you respect the order of operations, when you look at this, you're actually going to do 3 divided by 2 first, and then you're going to add 5. That's not correct. You have to just perform these operations left to right, as if you were just typing them in to one of those four function basic calculators. It would just do the operations in the order you enter them. You have to go in the order in which we've peeled the layers of the onion. First, you have to add that 3, then divide by 2. Here's what I mean, right? If you take one of those dumb calculators like the limited edition transparent green TI-83+, plus, and just type this into it, you'll do 5 plus 3 divided by 2, and you're going to get 6.5, which is not correct. However, if you just use a more sophisticated calculator, it's going to perform the operations as we type the operations in, and we'll get the correct answer of 4. And that completes a pretty cool one onion run of this two-step equation. Okay, okay, I can see the comments already. Bruh, why would you ever do this? Just add three and divide by two. Bruh, it's not that complicated. I get it, okay? I get it. This is just a way to visualize or organize what you're doing when solving one of these equations. I wouldn't want a student to rely on this method for long. It's not that efficient, it's messy, and it also has this awkward order of operations quirk when you're doing a single onion run. But it does emphasize the important aspect of linear equations that it's like the unknown has just been wrapped up in some algebraic operations and you just have to peel those layers away to find the unknown. As a teacher, it could be useful to draw it out this way at least once on the board just as a visual representation of that peeling away of layers. And if you don't think that this could ever be useful for a student, you probably haven't taught a classroom full of young kids that are dealing with linear equations for the first time. I can't say I love Love it, but this stuff is hard for people, and hey, it doesn't hurt to have another way to show how it's done. And next time I have to solve a simple equation like this for some reason in a video, I'm just going to solve it real quick and, and say that this is actually shorthand for the onion method. <laughs> 
So only the real ones who watch this onion video will understand that stupid comment when I make it. But let me know what you think about the onion method. Did you ever learn this way of solving linear equations? Did you learn some other cute way that you want to share? I'd love to know. And if you enjoy my videos and want to help support what I do, please consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to all sorts of fun videos and original music, and I'd really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm on table, I'm feeling art to keep the cable cut and untuck the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull a prey and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.